Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for May 11, 2018. This is episode 65 and today we're going to be talking about the build wrap up and text to speech integration with Microsoft Flow. And just as a reminder, while I am an employee of Microsoft, the content you're about to see is based upon my own personal opinions. So first off, let's do a little bit of a wrap up around Build. So Build was in Seattle this past week. Uh, so today is actually May 10th, so this is going to launch tomorrow. So it's been a crazy busy week, but a lot of fun. And here's some of the the things that I took away from Build, or at least things that I'm going to further investigate because I just didn't have a whole lot of time to dig in to these topics. But there definitely were uh, buzzworthy around the expo floor. And the first thing is Kafka support for Azure Event Hubs. So I'm a big fan of Azure Event Hubs. I've got some friends on that team. I'm really happy for them and their ability to ship this. Um, Event Hubs is basically a high speed, high throughput telemetry engine. And uh, it's, it's a managed service. It's something where you go ahead and provision it in Azure. You have a few knobs to turn in terms of throughput units but it's essentially a managed service. So if you're a customer, uh, you're, you're not concerned with a whole lot of infrastructure here. That's what uh, Microsoft is taking care of. And if you're not familiar with Kafka, it is a very popular open source, high speed, high throughput telemetry engine as well. Uh, very popular with a lot of the startups and even some of these massive uh, services like Netflix and um, and Twitter and so forth. So what's interesting about this news is that Event Hubs now has support for Kafka. And what that means is that it's essentially a Kafka head that sits in front of Event Hub, similar to what MQTT does. And what it allows you to do is it allows for publishing and consuming applications to believe that or think that they're talking to Kafka. And essentially they are because of the APIs have been implemented in the protocols. Um, so nothing has to change from those perspective, but you have a managed service now, which is pretty much unheard of. Um, yes, there's other solutions where you can run uh, clusters in the cloud, but none of them have the simplicity of event hubs. For event hubs, it's truly clicking a box and that's gonna enable Kafka. Um, to be fair, uh, there is still some additional work to be done in terms of feature parity between some of the other implementations of Kafka, but this is a huge first step for Event Hubs. And uh, Event Hubs has some ridiculous traffic that happens, um, I believe it's like over a trillion a day. And you know now this will be even a, a bigger opportunity for them. Uh, next up is Logic Apps. And uh, similarly, I got some friends on that team, so happy to see them uh, shipping some good stuff. And in this case, it's native event support for Logic Apps. And what that means, and this is the way it's been explained to me, I, I haven't seen it myself, but uh, so today or previously, you could go into Logic Apps in the Azure portal, and you could go ahead and basically drop a, an event grid trigger onto your Logic App, and basically it's going to then um, you know, wire up a webhook inside of um, event grid inside of Azure. But I guess what you can do now is the flip side of that. So almost similar to, um, some of the first party integration we've done with Flow with other, other tools, it's somewhere similar in that sense where you can go from Event Grid and basically go ahead and provision a Logic App. So I think it's bringing more people to the event party and uh, it, it sounds cool. It sounds it's something worth checking out if you're going to use those two technologies. Now the next one's pretty interesting for me uh, just because we do uh, actually a lot of Power BI embedded inside of Flow. Um, our whole analytics platform is um, is based on Power BI embedded. So I'm intrigued and, and this is not a commitment, this is not a promise, but um, it's definitely an area of exploration as we think about um, how we could perhaps bring alerts to Power BI embedded. Uh, so once again, not a commitment, um, but definitely something worth exploring because um, I wanna see how capable this is. And lastly, this is, uh, uh, I had an opportunity to see one session during my whole time at Build, and it was on the last day. It was after I had 
um, you know, finished all of my two sessions and I felt like, hey, like this is an amazing opportunity to be a build. You've got some of the brightest minds in the industry. I want to go check out some sessions. So I was actually walking to an AI session. It was something around like building or bringing AI to your apps. And all of a sudden there was this, the, you know, this huge lineup. And uh, the, the people that were working the conference um, were basically saying, okay, this is the lineup for Mark Rosinovich's introduction to blockchain session and me being intrigued by blockchain. I'm like, okay. And having a lot of respect for Mark, I'm like, okay, I got to go see this. So I stood in this line and um, I was able to get a seat way at the back, but um, it was great nonetheless, just to hear about just an introduction to blockchain itself. Plus got some insight into some of the, the larger projects that exist today, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. And then naturally we also got to see what Microsoft is doing in this space from an enterprise perspective. So it was a good session, uh, worth checking out, especially if you're new to cryptocurrency, uh, go ahead and go to the build site and, uh, and go ahead and watch that session and also watch sessions related to these other topics. As well. Now, from a flow perspective, I had the opportunity to participate in two sessions. So these were theater sessions, they're shorter sessions, but fun nonetheless. Uh, so on the, the left here, I've got this uh, Periscope video and uh, that was recorded by John, John Levesque. So thanks, John, for doing that. And this was a session I co-presented with Mehdi, who's from the customer success team here in Bellevue. And we wanted to talk about application lifecycle management with PowerShell and actually Flow. So sort of the two concepts that we talked about here were PowerShell and the ability to uh, chain some of these different PowerShell commands together in order to build a uh, a compelling solution. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and export uh, CSV files related to apps, Power Apps permissions, and Flow permissions. And then I layered over top a Power BI dashboard where you could go ahead and visualize this data. Uh, Mehdi also then talked about how you can uh, manage some of your Power Apps using Flow and what's going to become a Power Apps management connector. So currently it's in a custom connector phase, but it's something that uh, we as the Power Apps and Flow team have committed to shipping sometime uh, soon. I'll, I'll leave it at that. And um, certainly the last Middle Earth Friday episode I did, I talked about PowerShell and at the, at the end as a teaser and I said I'll be doing more. And I was hoping to do that for this time, uh, but there's a few more command lists that we want to ship. So I want to make sure that our story is complete, especially on the admin side. Um, so I'm going to pause that for now and hopefully in the next two weeks uh, when it's my turn again that I'll be able to further discuss uh, the rest of our PowerShell story. Now on the right here we've got the hot dog not hot dog uh, session and this was a, a session I co-presented with John Lebeck. As you can see there's tremendous turnout. There's people sitting, people standing. Um, this is only like probably half the crowd maybe. Um, it was it was a great time once again, only 20 minutes. But uh, what we tried to do is to build the hot dog, not hot dog application or, or flow rather within 10 minutes. Unfortunately, I had a, a few browser issues and the, the demo gods got to me. Uh, so the joke John and I have is I, I didn't build one flow in 10 minutes, but I was able to build two flows in 11 minutes. And um, so unfortunately that actually resulted in one part of our demo not uh, we were unable to show it just because the timeline didn't work out and and our timing didn't quite work out so I'm going to show you that today and that's really the core of, of this session today and it's around the ability to take text and convert it to speech using Microsoft flow and a third-party connector called infobit now before I get to that there's one other thing I want to mention and uh, that's the Road to Build 2018 video that John and I um, had created. And we had some, some help recording from Gabe. But uh, this is a pretty cool video. This is a, an early preview I saw today. So I just took a screen grab of it. And uh, it's, it's pretty impressive what they've been able to put together from an editing standpoint. And uh, if you're into Casey Neistat or... Gary Vaynerchuk, it's sort of in line with some of that. And the whole point of this video was we want to show what's involved in actually preparing a session for build. 
Um, it's build. It's the first time John and I have spoken at Build. We've spoken at other large events like Ignite in the past, but this was the first time at Build, and we thought, what better way to share that experience with other viewers than to document a process? So we go through the planning stages, the practicing stages, going to the event, um, you know, actually like executing at the event, uh, doing post mortem after the fact, showing some of the expo. So when this this video comes out, highly recommend you check it out. So now let's get to the uh, main content. And um, as I mentioned before, this is my own personal opinion. Uh, this is something I think is cool. Uh, we've been able to, uh, we're building some templates around this technology. So I've had a chance to play with it. Uh, this isn't an endorsement by any means, but I thought it was cool. So I thought it was worth showing you all. And so you can, register for the service for infobip.com. Now, I'm not aware of a free trial, at least not when I looked around. Um, we had the ability or the opportunity just to work with that team directly through, um, through our template experience that we're going to um, enable for this particular connector. So that's how I was able to, to get some, some credentials here. So let's, let's jump into the demo. It's a pretty straightforward demo. Um, we're going to use a flick button. And in this case, I've got the Microsoft Flow branded flick button. Uh, we were able to get a few of these for marketing. I'm sorry, I don't have any extra, so can't help you if you ask there. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. And we're then going to go ahead and make a voice call. And the voice call is pretty simple. You basically, can provide the phone number that you want to call, a message, and in this case, the message is sent from Microsoft Flow at Build 2018. Hey John, I think you just lost a bet. Can you please get me a medium Americano with light cream? Um, I also have the ability to specify the phone number that it's coming from. Um, when you do register, uh, that is a, a number or piece of data that you do get back. So the whole purpose of this scenario was that um, after I completed building the, the hot dog not hot dog flow in 10 minutes I was going to win this bet that John and I had and the bet was um, if I could do it in 10 minutes he'd have to get me coffee for a week and so the idea was uh, as part of um, some swag that we were handing out at the event we were handing out some of these buttons and so I wanted to be able to show um, you know the crowd that hey speaking of buttons um, you know, I've got a message for you, John, and then I'd go ahead and press the button. And then what we're going to see is I've got a phone call now. Microsoft Flow and Build 2018. Hey John, I think you just lost a bet. Can you please get me a medium Americano, light cream? And that's it. That's it's that simple, but it's actually pretty cool when you think about it. Um, and it sounds it sounds really good. Um, you know, especially for for uh, text to speech. Uh, what's also interesting about this connector is there's a couple other actions. Here. So we can check our balance. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it's metered, but it must be met, be metered based upon uh, your API calls. So here we've gone ahead and we've made a voice call, and we can also go ahead and send a text message if we if we want as well. So much like the Twilio connector, um, we also have the ability to send SMS from the service. Now one other thing, and I haven't had a chance to test this out, but I think this is also a feature that uh, we've heard from other customers as well. So it's kind of cool to see it available here. And that's InfoBip when you receive an incoming text message. Go ahead and initiate a flow. So that could be pretty cool too, especially we've talked a little bit about you know, customer service scenarios in the past where you've got different channels. It could be through Twitter, it could be through email. Well, now it can also be through SMS messaging. 
So your kid is receiving coming text messages, maybe you route it through uh, Lewis language understanding to determine intent, and then route that message to um, the appropriate uh, system that you need to pass that message off to. So cool. So short episode this time, um, but I hope you found it useful and beneficial. I want to thank BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. Um, if you haven't registered for Integrate 2018 in London, that is coming up fast. So I suggest you go ahead and register for that. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday. Baby, could you? I got too much on my mind right now. I ain't got the time to get you sent right now. I got too much on my mind right now. Tell that hero, tell, get my baby back. Right